Man, the shenanigans on this mid-season finale was fucking crazy. Oh, and Nancy, I'm coming for you. Let's talk about the Oval. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy, Kenny. Now, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information I have in the description box as well as the comment section. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. Now, before I get started with this review, let me send a shout out to Metro Health DC. If you are in the DMV area and you're looking for quality health care, um, reach out to us at Metro Health DC today. The number is in the description box in the comment section, and there's also a form that you can fill out, and someone from the outreach team will be in touch with you. Also, let me send a, sp a special shout out to GMAC, which is Gay Men's Health Collaborative. If you are in the DMV area and would like to get tested for HIV, reach out to us at the GMAC crew for a home testing kit. You can have the kit mailed to you, or you can call and make a same-day appointment and actually come to our location to pick one up. And if you're interested in getting set up for PrEP, which is HIV prevention medication, reach out to the GMAC crew for that as well. And if you're a fan of your boy here at KRS TV and like to become one of my Black Diamonds, subscribe to my Patreon. Black Diamonds, because in darkness, we'll still, because in darkness we still shine. I had to get that out. Uh, for $5 a month, you get all of my YouTube content as well as videos that will be specific for the Black Diamonds. And some of those videos I will share on YouTube just to give everyone an idea of what the Black Diamonds are all about. And check out my YouTube partner, BK World 2, which is the Black Netflix. Um, you get shows like this one, The Oval, as well as um, The Black Ink Crew and many others. So after you watch this review, click that link in my description box and comment section to check out BK World 2. Now, this is The Oval Season 2, Episode 13. The name of this episode is Every Weekend, and this is the mid-season finale. The show returns on July 20th. Um, those are motorcycle guys, so if you hear that, excuse the noise. But we're going to keep this shit rolling, because they're getting on my fucking nerves. Anyway. Oh! All right. But yes, The Oval returns back on July 20th. And let's just say this mid-season finale was fucking insane. So much went down. So, let's begin. First, I'm going to talk about Donald, Lily, and Bobby. Donald walks into his house and literally sees Lily riding Bobby like a motorbike. Hey, she is getting her life. Bobby pulls a gun out on Donald and tells him, you move, I'll blow your brains out. And Bobby gets up and like literally gets up in Donald's face. And Donald's like, man, you ain't going to shoot me. I'm the chief of staff. He's like, you want to bet? He's like, if you was going to shoot me, you would have done it already. And all this shit. So he, you know, still flexing his muscle because he knows he's chief of staff. And he know Bobby ain't just going to blow him away like that. And then all of a sudden, the nerve of Donald with his simple punk ass going to sit in the bed with Lily talking about something. You lied to me. Really, bitch? You've been lying about your entire life the whole fucking time, dude. And you got a nerve to say you lied to me? You've been lying to her from the very beginning. And she says that you've been lying too. So how long have you known Kyle? He says eight years. And you... She says, oh, yeah, me and Bobby been knowing each other for a minute. So he so he was like, oh, so that day you shot him, you actually knew him then. He was. She was like, yeah, uh-huh. And Bobby, and you could tell Donald was in his feelings. And I'm like, bruh, 
You literally screwed Kyle in that same bed. That was supposed to have been the marital bed for you and your wife, but you screwed your puppy in that bed, and now you feel some kind of way that she did the same thing? It's more her saying that um, a woman needs love just like you do. Check out that Ray Parker song. Like, huh, if you can do it, she can too, bitch. And she just proved that shit. And Donald was all up in his feelings. And then after Donald walks out or whatever, he pretty much just blows Bobby off. Like, Bobby, you ain't going to do shit. But I'm like, Bobby will actually kill her. But it's because of Lily is the only reason why he, why he, isn't, why he didn't shoot Donald. And plus, they got this bigger plan. So, Lily and Bobby go back and forth. He's like saying, are you with me? She's like, yeah, I'm with you. I want to help take that son of a bitch down. But he's like, won't you leave with me? I don't trust. I don't, I don't, you're not safe here. Won't you come with me? She's like, he's not going to harm me. You know, we got this dinner at the White House. He needs me on his arm. He's not going to hurt me. And she, he's like, I want you to come with me. Are you with me? He's, she's like, yes, I'm with you. She's like, then won't you come with me? She's like, I'm not going back to that cabin. Boo boo. That was your, that was a telltale sign. Miss Lily is materialistic, honey. She wants to be in that nice ass house. She got all them fineries. She's a, um, she's pretty much, um, a fashion designer. She's posh, honey. You know, you can't take her out of that environment and put her in no cabin. Boo boo. <laughs> she 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 is used to fineries and luxury. So she's like, um, I'm not leaving till I get all of this. I'ma stay and get what's fucking mine because she put in half on that damn house. So she's like, I'm not walking away from my shit. And Bobby pretty much got in his feelings and left. And she's like, Bobby, come on, Bobby. I'm like, see, just like Donald is using Kyle as a puppy. She kind of does the same thing to Bobby because Bobby's in his feelings. But I have a good idea who alerted Donald because only one person knew that Bobby was going to be there. And I really do think Max with his old simple punk ass was the one who called Donald because Max still got access to some of the people in the White House because, you know, he was SS. And he used to work close detail on Hunter. So... I think Max was the one that dimed out Bobby because Max in his fucking feelings. And I think Max is jealous of the fact that Bobby is in love with Lily. And then also because, you know, Max is on his own shit. So I think it was Max who who dimed him out to um to Donald and pretty much disguised himself and didn't say who. But he says, you need to go home. So, yeah, Max did that shit. So then we go back to the yellow room where Sam is serving that eggplant to Victoria. And then all of a sudden, Sam gets remorseful. You know, I love my wife. I shouldn't have did this and all of that. And then asks her, you know, you know, um, can you take a pill or whatever? You know, the after pill in case she gets pregnant. Oh, bruh, she ain't going to do that shit. And he pretty much says that, look, I can't work your detail. You know, we should not ever have done this. But she's like, yeah, but you did. And he's like, I love your wife. He's like, I don't give a damn about your wife. I'm like, she don't. But you knew that going in there. And yet you still gave rid of Peter because you just couldn't take it no more. You know, when Victoria took um, unbutton that dress and you saw all that she was serving and all that wagon she was dragging, you couldn't wait. To bend her over and give her the eggplant shaft. And that's exactly what you did, bruh. But now, you're, you're, you're now working in a toxic environment. Because you are, we already know how malicious and messy Victoria is. And Victoria's always going to hold that shit over his head. But little day, but then, you know, she pretty much gets mad because he's resistant and and she was and he was like, Don't play this game with me. She's like, What game? Like, look, you saw what you wanted and you acted on it. Oh, they get on my nerves. Ignore them. But I was like, wow. Just I'm like, Sam. As I said, you was going to regret that shit afterwards. And and slow enough, you he immediately regretted it. But then even more so because she's going to make it a toxic environment for him to work in. And he needs his job. 
So tell me why the hell, as, you know, he pretty much is trying to fix his clothes and shit. She's like, don't do that shit up in here. Take that shit outside. And as soon as he opens the door, Richard is there and sees that his pants are unzipped and his shirt's out of his pants. Immediately, Richard got that mean look on his face like, oh, so this is something you do on a regular. Because remember, Richard's still thinking that Sam slept with Nancy. So... All of a sudden, Victoria's like, I didn't order, I didn't offer, I didn't ask for any tea. He was like, your son did. And he, she's like, my son is not in here. And he was like, well, he told me that he was in the yellow room. And next thing you know, we see damn Jason come out the damn other room. And I'm like, that damn Jason knows the whole fucking layout of the fucking White House. And this little messy little bitch was just, just popped the fuck up and was like, hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Richard was about to serve it, and Victoria's like, you can leave. You can go. And he's like, thank you, Richard. I was like, oh, Jason, you messy little bitch. <laughs> and he was letting Victoria have it. She was like, oh, yeah, I heard you having sex with him. That's disgusting. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. He's a married man. And he just starts going in a Victorian course. And Victoria's like, shut the hell up, Jason, and get the hell away from me. She goes out onto, like, the, um, you know, the balcony or whatever. He then goes out there sipping on his tea, still fucking with her and shit. And she was like, what do you think my father's going to think when he finds out about this? She's like... Do you think I'm scared of your father? He's like, no, I know you're not scared. He's like, yeah, and let that be a reminder to you too. And he's like, I know, I know. And she's like, look, just get away from me, all right? And she, he was like, yeah, I'm going to leave you alone because clearly after what you did, you need some fresh air. <laughs> I was like, JC, you, you messy bitch. <laughs> Jason gave me life this episode. I can't go in front. That shit was hilarious. But yeah, so that go that was going on. Then on the other part of the White House, we see Hunter and Donald are in a meeting with the cabinet members. We see Ellie's at the table. That damn Hunter is literally giving her the evil stare. Like he is answering, you know, all of the questions that Donald's posing to him, but he ain't even focused on them. He's focused on Ellie. And then it gets to the point, he's like, Ellie, I need to talk to you in the Oval. So they, so he goes off in the Oval with her. And then one of the cabinet members turns to Donald's like, for some odd reason, he's always like not focused when he's, when, when we meet up with him. And then Donald was like, uh, he's still getting acclimated to his new role, but then threatens her, don't ever say no shit like that again. So then, inside the Oval, Hunter and Ellie go back and forth. Hunter's still pissed off because she took his underwear, but she says, I wasn't doing it to frame you. I just wanted a piece of you. I love the way you smell, and it really turns me on, and I just wanted a piece of you and all that shit. I'm like, bitch, after all that shit that went down with Diane, why would you make a move like that and not discuss it first? So right now, Hunter is like, fuck Ellie. But we can definitely tell Hunter does have feelings for her. And she clocked it, too. She's like, I know you have feelings for me. She, He's like, girl, you can miss me with that bullshit. I don't give a fuck. And then she tried to show him an article that she's going to use to try to spin the whole mess that was created by Diane. He pretty much read the title and dismissed it. Like, okay, whatever. And she was like, see, I just feel like I don't have any power in this situation. But he's like, but I thought at first you said you had all the power. I guess, um... I guess the um the joke's on your ass. And then she's like, I know you care about me. He's like, you can leave, Ellie. You, I don't know why the hell you still here. Get the fuck out of here. But, but as soon as she left, you can see he's still mad. So, bitch, you're in your feelings because you do like her. Like, Hunter's a simple bitch. He really is. So then we see Sam and Richard go back and forth. And, of course, Richard's like, are you fucking serious? That's the fucking first lady. Are you fucking crazy? Why the fuck would you do that? He's like, look, 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 look. It, it just happened, all right? I regret it. I don't need you reminding me of this shit. He's like, well, uh, remind you. So 
What happened all the years ago when you came home? You came home and you were gone for a month. And then all of a sudden, nine months later, Nancy Nancy had um had picky. You mean to tell me you don't know nothing? You ain't do shit? He's like, bruh. He's like, well, clearly what you just did, you probably did fuck Nancy and all this shit. You need to tell me right now. And he's like, Richard, after all these years, man, I would never do no shit like that to you. And Richard immediately begins to realize that Sam is telling the truth. And he said, but did you see her with anybody? He says, no. All I saw, only people I saw um, Nancy with was with your family. That was a telltale sign. And trust and believe, we find out that, yeah, it was somebody in his family. But we gonna get to that, child. But he's like, what am I to do? And Richard's like, you crossed the line, bro. Ain't shit I can do for you now. You done made a mess out of everything because not only does Richard know about it, but Jason knows about it. And trust and believe, that damn Jason showed his ass this damn episode, child. But we're going to keep it pushing. Then we see Kyle literally torturing Diane. And I already knew. I said, Diane's done. After he done injected her with that shit, he wakes her up and starts asking her questions. And she pretty much says, I ain't telling you a damn thing. Then he fucking pulls out the saw and shit, turns it on. It's like, I'm going to do it one by one. And you're going to tell me everything. And she's like, I'm not saying nothing. And all of a sudden, you hear, ah! I was like... Diane's done, bitch, because even if you tell everything, Kyle won't get rid of you because now you're a liability. So, yeah, Diane, Diane is dead. You know, I already knew Diane was done. So then we see that Nancy is at Picky's funeral. She's the only person there. The only person that came to show up to show support was Priscilla. Priscilla is emotional because she's got a lot going on with Sam and then also what happened to Jean and um, Greg and all of that. So she got all of this on her mind and she's very emotional. Um, Nancy's very emotional because she says that my own damn sister didn't even come to see him. Nobody came to pay respects to him. And, you know, it's my fault. It's my fault because of what I did. It led him down the wrong path. I'm like, yeah, it is your fault. And of course, Priscilla's like, you can't blame yourself. Why the hell can she, Priscilla? See, that's the problem with both of y'all asses. Y'all both don't want to take responsibility for your own shit. The reason why Sam out here, you know, going dick crazy is because you're not satisfying your man. And the reason why shit's fucked up at Nancy because Nancy ain't being real about her shit. So both of y'all got a problem. And I see that's why y'all both good Judys. Because both of y'all on the same bullshit. So, you know, Priscilla is... So pretty much Nancy saying that I can't tell Richard who the father is. Because I know I'm afraid of what Rich is going to do. But she said... But, but Priscilla gave her some good advice. She says that maybe you need to face your truth. So therefore, you can prepare for a better future. The fact that you're holding on to this and the fact that he doesn't know and he's not letting it go, you need to make peace with this. So I'm saying, actually, I agree with you, Priscilla. You need to confront it and you need to be real. You the one that opened up this can by letting everybody know that Picky was your son when nobody knew about it. So you just drop a bomb like that, but then you don't complete the entire story. And from what we find out, bitch, we know why she didn't tell that shit. But yeah, let's keep it pushing. So then we see Alan. Alan has a run in with Donald. Donald is still trying to like, you know, Donald, like, um, Alan, what's wrong? You don't seem like yourself. You, like, I'm like, you already know why he fucking feels some kind of way because he knows damn well you knew that Ellie was screwing Hunter and you practically lied to his face. But he's going to fucking say face because he needs his job. But you see that that damn Donald is messy. And, you know, we see that Alan is bothered, you know, because we know that that damn Alan got a temper. We saw how he flipped out and went off on Ellie. So we know deep down inside. Yeah, Alan will pop the fuck off and do some crazy shit. And I think Jason knows that about Alan because he feels that energy. Because soon as Donald leaves, Jason comes in there with his bullshit, still trying to get him to go off and, you know, kill kill the um the president and the first lady. And he's like, first of all, and like, and 
it gets to the point where Allen gets so pissed that he literally grabs Jason and throws him out of there because Jason was doing too damn much. And I'm like, but that ain't the only thing Jason gonna do because I'm about to get to this shit because that damn Jason was one of the MVPs of this damn episode because <laughs> that little motherfucker, he got his mother and his father in him to a T. That is their fucking child. As much as damn Victoria with her self-righteous, stupid ass want to say that, oh, the spawn, yeah, that's a spawn that you gave birth to, bitch. Because he just like you and Hunter. And all the bullshit he on, he learned it from somewhere. So it got to the point where Alan was just over it. And, like, literally put Jason out there because Jason was still on that shit trying to get him to assassinate his father and all that shit. Like, you're not mad after what they did? You're not upset? I can tell you're mad. You're not going to do anything? He just got rid of his... He just literally grabbed Jason and got his ass up out of there. And rightfully so because Jason was doing too damn much. Then we see Kyle comes into the office um, he t he tells Alan that he wants to see Donald. He said he says he don't want to be disturbed. Oh, he not so that Donald's like oh, oh, but then Cal was like oh, but he'll see me. I'm like there you go, still thinking you that number one bitch when really you're pretty much at the bottom of the list, whore. He only call you when he wants you, like a like a puppy. Ruff ruff. So he knocks on the damn door and Donald's like, I said I don't want to be disturbed. But then he goes up in there. He updates him that, yeah, Diane's dead, but I got everything I need to know. I know that it's it was Max and Bobby that was helping her and they're out in some cabin in Rockwell, Virginia. Oh, yeah. She was going to spill the beans, but little do you know, remember, she gave that file to Priscilla. And as soon as it gets in Sam's hands, Sam could work that shit and could take down that whole damn administration. So that was that was that was boss move because she knew that she was going into the um, enemy's territory and that she possibly wasn't going to walk out alive. So that was a good play by Diane. So him. So Donald and Kyle go back and forth and and then he's like, what's the matter with you? Like, why do you look so down? And then he tells him that Lily, he, he came, somebody tipped him off to go to his house. And I think Max was the one who did that shit because Max is a simple bitch. Um, he went to the house and saw Lily having sex with Bobby. He was like, oh, really, Bobby? <laughs> and then, like, that damn Kyle starts getting mad as shit because he noticed that Donald is bothered by it. So it's clear he does have feelings for Lily. Or he had, yeah, so he does have feelings for us. He does love his, he does have like some feelings for his wife, even though he's not sexually attracted to her, but he does got love for her. And oh, that damn cow got in his feelings like, I've done everything for you and this is how you're going to do me after all the, all that we've been through. And I, I was rolling like shit. I'm like, cow, you stupid bitch. You still ain't got the fact that you're a puppy, honey. He only call you when he want to play with you and then he fucking sends you away. You ain't picked that shit yet? After eight fucking years? You a sad bitch, Kyle. A true sad bitch. And I was just laughing because he got so fucking mad. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's just so damn sad with Kyle because Kyle is in love with a man that don't love him back. He's constantly being used. Like, boo-boo, he only call you when he needs you to do something for him or he wants you to, um, when he wants you to, you know, play with his log, honey. That's the only time he call you. That motherfucker don't love you at all. And he had another get in his feelings. So then... We get this crazy scene between Jason and Priscilla. He calls Priscilla up, you know, pretty much lets her know. Um, he's And she was like, uh, why are you calling me? Why won't you talk to somebody on staff? He's like, I got something to tell you. I know about your husband. Yeah, your husband was having sex with my mother in the yellow room today. And you can see that damn shit was really getting to Priscilla. But Priscilla was trying to keep her cool. And she says, well, what about Gene? 
The last time I heard Jean was Jean was at your room. What happened to her? He's like, I don't know anything about Jean. He's like, and besides, there's no cameras in here. Oh yeah, and we also saw earlier that Priscilla goes talks to Norman, and yes, Miss Lord died because that damn Kyle, you know, smothered her with a pillow, and. Norman was just tore the fuck up because he's like, I've been with this woman for 55 years. What am I going to do now? But then she looks and see there's a camera up there. So whoever did, they probably got caught on camera. But then again, we know how thorough Kyle is. So there's no telling. So she starts questioning Jason like, so what happened to Jean? The last place she saw was in your room and then nobody heard anything. So what really happened, Jason? He's like, um, I don't know what you're talking about. And besides, there's no cameras in here, so who's to say where she went after him? Yeah, she comes in here to clean my room, but that was about it. But then he says that um, I would send you the video, but I can't, but I got the audio. Oh, he fucking pulls the audio up. Oh, that damn Priscilla started breaking down. I'm like, he got you, bitch. And then all of a sudden, she got off the phone and just screamed. And I was like, bitch. You was you was being a mean bitch. You kept putting them out the room. If you actually, you know, if you actually served that eggplant parmigiana, he wouldn't have been fucking with Victoria in the first damn place. He was trying to be faithful, trying to do the right thing, but you decided to go on a damn tangent and get in your damn feelings and started being a mean bitch. You you literally pushed him over there to Victoria. And the only reason why he did that shit was because he had an impulse. <laughs> but yeah, that shit was crazy. Then we also see as far as Sam, Sam talks to Officer Dave. And then we see that Kyle is now working with Alonzo. You know, the guy that works in Secret Service. He says, I'm about to take you up to the big leads. Go and um, get these 911 calls from the police station. So we see that Alonzo goes to see Officer Officer Jake. That's his name. He goes to see Officer Jake. Jake tells him, oh, uh, somebody from Secret Service already came and got him already. Um, last name Smith. And of course, you know, Alonzo's like, really? Okay. He goes out there and calls Kyle and lets Kyle know, well, he says some agent picked it up. Somebody named Smith. He's like, okay, we'll look into that shit. Little do they know, Jake um, was holding those 911 calls for um, Sam. And he tells Sam, you better get your ass down here now and get these 911 calls because Secret Service already trying to get them. And I lied. I don't know what shit you got me into, but you better get down here and get them. So we saw that go on. Then I'm about to talk about this dumb ass Barry. Barry, you deserved everything you got this fucking episode because you are a simple, hard-headed little bitch. Because your father told you to wait for him to get home and the both of you will go to see Ruth and about getting back Callie. Oh, but no. This motherfucker decides to put fake paper in the boxes to make it look like all the money was there because, you know, some of that money was spent to bail his crazy ass out of jail. So, all of a sudden... He comes downstairs. He runs into Nancy. Nancy says, what did your father tell you? Didn't he tell you to wait for him? You're like, why are you being so hard-headed? He's like, I'm not being hard-headed. You know, I gave him the wrong time. I'm going to go get my daughter back. I can do this on my own and blah, blah. I'm like, so you mean to fucking tell me that you forgot the fact how when you was talking to Ruth and you turned around and all the motherfuckers was deep on your ass? That didn't give you an alert that you need to have some goons or somebody with you? You literally gonna go back there by your damn self. You deserved everything you received because you're completely so fucking gone that you don't even have common sense. Because that was fucking stupid. And she's trying to plead with him, and he blows her off like, like, whatever, mom. Besides, you need to be focusing on your situation with daddy. Like, why you, let me worry about what I'm doing. So I was like, okay, bruh. So we see that that damn Barry goes down there with the money. He sees Ruth, and him and Ruth go back and forth. He talking shit like, where the hell my daughter at? She says, where's the money? He says, where's my daughter? And she's like, oh, she in the van. 
And he's like, he's like, I'm not playing with you, Ruth. Where the fuck is my daughter? She says she's in the van. Open it up. Oh, he opens up that van. Four of them damn raggadooshies come and they beat the living shit out of fucking Barry. Beat him down and then pick him up. He all, no, no, no. And threw his ass up in the van. I'm like, bitch, you deserved everything you got with your dumb, hard-headed ass. Your damn father pretty much was was a Marine, you know, he about that damn life, you ain't about that life, you just a fucking mother, you just a, um, a wannabe tough boy with a big ass mouth, and he told your stupid ass to wait for him for a reason, so he can protect you, but now you in enemy's territory, and they gonna torture the shit out of Barry, we don't even know if Barry gonna make it out that bitch alive, so I'm like, Barry, you, you a dumb son of a bitch. You are stupid as fuck because at the end of the day, your father told you he wanted to go with you for a reason and you decided to go there by your damn self. Dude, if they wanted, if you would have, if they had your damn daughter, you would have had her by now. Your father knew that they were fucking playing games with your dumb ass, but you chose to go there anyway by yourself, and that's why that's why you got fucked up. And if if they fuck if they fucking kill you, bitch, that's on you. You did that shit yourself. I've always had you know some sympathy and everything, but at that moment, that was dumb, and you deserve to get fucked up because. You shouldn't have went there by your damn self and you had no backup. You ain't have no weapon. You had no goons. You ain't have shit. And you going against up a whole fucking cult. Yeah, they lit his ass up. And you deserved every damn punch and lick that you received. Stupid bitch. Okay. Now this was the kicker for me. And Nancy... You are on my list permanently after this shit. Because we see finally Richard gets home. And she's she lets him he he looking for Barry. He says, Barry gone. He's like, I told him to wait for me. He's like, he wouldn't listen. I told him to stay here and wait for you. And he's like, I'm gonna call him. She he's like, he ain't gonna answer. I'm like, yeah, he ain't gonna answer because he got fucked up. <laughs> and they gonna probably take him somewhere and fuck him up some more. Good riddance, Barry. <laughs> and she's like, and he's, and he's like, she's like, let's talk. He's like, I ain't got shit to say to you till you tell me who the father of Picky is. I don't want to hear shit you got to say. And she just says, oh, I think it's about time I tell you. And she's like, sit down. He's like, I ain't got to sit down. I'll stand right here. He's like, please, you need to sit down. So... He sit down. He's like, so tell me, who was it? She's like, the thing is, it's so hard to tell you this because you actually admire this man. You idolize him. You know, when you were gone, he was very good to me. He mowed the lawn. He would bring me flowers, take me to church. I'm like, oh, so you went to church, bitch, but you didn't read the part about um, fornication and committing adultery? It's funny how we pick and choose parts of the Bible to, to um to follow. We only go what's convenient at the time, but the shit we need to be real, re the shit that we need to be practicing, we completely overlook or we ignore. And she pretty much says it only happened one time, and all of a sudden, he starts putting it together. She was, he was like, what? And she's like, look, it only happened one time. I, I didn't mean for this to happen. And it was only one time. And she's like, I was lonely. I should not have gotten that lonely. I was only 23. Bitch, you were old enough to know right from wrong. I understand people get lonely because the issue is not the fact that you cheated. The issue was who you cheated with. And then he's saying, so when she he starts putting together somebody that he idolized and looks up to, Somebody that he has a high respect for. All of a sudden, he's like, really, Nancy? Really? My father? And she's like, yes. And he's like, did he rape you? She's like, no. No, he didn't. 
I'm like, oh, Nancy, you gutter ass bitch. As I said, everything Nancy touched turns to shit. You are the reason why this whole family is screwed up. You are like the toxic energy that has completely brought this whole family down. And we literally see that that Richard was just done. He just walked away and she's pleading and crying, Richard, Richard. I'm like, bitch, don't be calling no fucking Richard. Your marriage is done. Now, I'm going to see what Tyler Perry going to do with this shit. But as of right now, you no longer have a marriage, honey. Your marriage is completely over. Out of all the motherfuckers in the world, you had sex with his father and then had a baby and passed it on to your crackhead sister. And he now realizes that all this time, Picky was actually his baby brother. And then not only was he... Barry's brother, but he was also Barry's uncle. I'm like, Nancy, you one trifling bitch for this shit. And I have nothing nice to say about your ass any fucking more. Because, bitch, you have literally broken Richard to the point where I don't think he'll ever recover. Because he's like, you did this shit with my father? I'm like, bruh, that was the killer for me. So all this damn time, now we now see why she kept that damn secret. Because she knew everything would just completely unravel if she told the truth. And Richard just walked away and she's crying and pleading for Richard. Because, like, bitch, Richard's, your shit is done, bitch. You are through. And boy went, well, we, <laughs> I mean, we gonna, well, we'll see if Barry survives, but... You know, but right now, Barry is indisposed. So <laughs> it's going to be a minute before Barry find that out. But man, that shit had me like, oh, you rotten ass bitch. So here it is. You've been Bible thumping, been throwing all your anger and aggression on Barry and shit. Then got his damn daughter taken away from him. Like, bitch, you're the reason why Barry in the situation he's in. You're the reason why Sharon's in her shit. You're the reason why Richard's in his shit. It's like she is just the um toxic detonator just making shit happen for her whole fucking family. I'm saying, hey, take fucking Nancy to the damn pastures and leave her ass there. Because as long as she in the space, it's always going to be some shit. Yo, I was just blown by that. Like, yo. And here it is. You pet. And then on top of it, Picky too. You made Picky's life hell because you had him raised by your crackhead sister. No wonder why he turned to the streets. That's all he knew. Oh, that damn Nancy boiled my boiled my blood. Like I'm like, yo, you, there's no lower you can get by by doing something like that. Somebody that he admires and respects and looks up to, and you chose to have sex with his daddy, <laughs> bitch. You could have fucking called you um an escort or something. Hell, you could have went to the damn, I mean, shoot, Nancy's a beautiful woman. Nancy, you could have went to the damn bar and got you a dude if you was that damn lonely. Hell, you could have got on a dating app. But you went after his daddy. But then again, she probably went after his daddy because it reminded her of Richard. But bitch, no. Ain't no coming back from that shit. So, that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. But yeah, Nancy, bitch, you're canceled. <laughs> so that's what I have, y'all. You know, I'll be back on, you know, back in July when the show um, premieres, re-premieres and everything. I'm so here for it. But yeah, that, that scene took me out. So until next time, everybody, take care.